back. Been a minute. Yeah, been a couple of weeks. A I, well, I was sick last week, so. That's, yeah, uh... you know, we we have these plans for everything we want to do. Just never really works out. Oh uh, yeah, I mean, shit happens. But know. we are getting the ducks. Like ducks. that's not that's a non-negotiable. We're getting we're getting the ducks. Definitely, definitely getting the ducks. Um, you can keep the baseball duck. It's okay. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, you know, shit happens, but we we always, we always find a way to, uh, you know, figure it out, and that's uh that's really uh how it's how it goes. Uh, we got we yeah, got some I mean, plans for the future. Yep, yep. We're we're gonna get it done uh, by the new year. Hopefully, getting back in person soon because yeah. I mean, we're at what episode one hundred now. Like, we are at a we hit triple episode, digits. We hit triple digits, baby. Episode one hundred to. Uh, to uh a hundred and a thousand more right or a hundred and nine that's a more. lot of, that's, that's a lot of fucking episodes man what's the next what's the next milestone really 200 or 250 i mean let's get to 150 first because <laughs> 150 is about another year that's yeah 150 brings us to the next world series next world series yeah so let's get let's get through next season first <laughs> Then we can start looking at, at other milestones because <laughs> let's put it this way. This is the first full season we did. And we still had some bumps in the road, you know. Thankfully, uh, we all stayed relatively healthy. Um, yeah. yeah, I was I was good all the way up until the <laughs> until the end. <laughs> Listen, we pulled a Justin Turner, you know, last game of the year. We decided, you know, <laughs> can't do it. Gotta gotta pull the plug there. <laughs> I'm getting COVID at the end of there. Thankfully, we didn't get COVID though, thankfully. Knock on wood. Uh, I'm fully um, immune. Yeah, I know. I probably, I probably am at this point anyway. Uh, <laughs> I definitely, like, let's be real. I definitely had it at some point this you year. Had it. If not at least twice last year. Like, we've made it through two COVID seasons, though. Mm-hmm. We've made it through. And we're going to make it through. Third. God knows whatever 2019 was for us. I thought, you know, we were getting started. Uh, yeah. You know, uh, looking back at 2019, like, you know, I, I mean, I didn't know what the fuck I was doing. You were yeah, editing, you, you were editing you everything. No idea. Um, I mean, but uh, you were. Feel bre- like, it, I, no one ever stuck a microphone in front of your face before, really. Never, ever, like literally never. So and I was transitioning from radio, yeah, to podcast, which is two totally different animals. I've probably mentioned it before, but very, they, they're very different. I mean, I listened to your show uh, a few weeks ago when you were up at uh, ESU. Oh, when I was back at school, yeah. Yeah, and uh, yeah. I it, fucked up here and there. It's it's completely different, you know. Uh, it's not it the same at all. So, it it's a completely different animal because when you're doing radio and you know, I, I love doing radio, man. I do. It's 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 scheduled. It's a rigid thing podcasting it's so free-flowing and and there's so much more freedom you want. obviously obviously with us having mac and mike on as regularly as we have yeah you, know, you can't do four voices on radio it doesn't always work no uh, four like, voices on a podcast doesn't always work either but we make it work yeah i mean four fours four is a lot you know like the only thing of four in radio that i could ever think of is uh the breakfast club when they have on a guest though right you know it's yeah, they're they're it's so different, and and the fact that we've made it to episode 100 is pretty damn cool in my opinion. Because let's be real here, by 2019 we were like, holy shit, we can get to episode 15. You know, yeah. like yeah, like by the end of 2019 we were just wondering what the fuck. Yeah. Then 2020 hit COVID. And we're like, well, now what do we do? Thank. I mean, first yeah. off, before we go any further, let's just shout out Harrison Bader. Nick yes. Gordon, uh, Kyle. Kyle Martin, Kyle, yep. And uh, I mean, Jim? everyone who's really happy. Mark. Yep. Those guys are great, man. Yeah. Love uh, them. PTP. Yeah, PTP. That's right. And uh, Justin. Justin. Uh, on base, or whatever, whatever he goes yeah. by now. Not, well, nothing. He doesn't do right. Instagram. He's got, he's he, works. Network. he works with. Yeah. yeah. Um, no, we've had to get to this point, it's been. It's been a journey to say the least. Mm-hmm. So from reminiscing for far too long to uh, some more Saturn news, uh, I believe it was 
Mo- yeah, Monday night, Monday morning, actually. Eduardo Perez broke the news, actually, which was very yes. strange to me. Uh, regardless, Why? Uh, I I, didn't, I wouldn't expect him to break that kind of news. But they were friends, weren't they? Were they? I thought I, mean, I thought so. I, I thought that's what I heard on MLB Network. I I I could be wrong though. You I don't have MLB Network anymore. I gotta remember that. Oh, that's right. Um, Eduardo Perez broke the news Monday morning that long time uh, Met reliever and, and one of the most reliable arms in baseball history. You could argue. Yeah. Uh, Pedro Feliciano passed away in his sleep at the age of forty five. Uh, this one sucks because Pedro never got the love and and I think the respect that he deserved on a larger scale. Like Mets fans loved him. You know, that's just how it was. You know, this guy was rock solid over a course of five seasons. He pitched in 406 or 408 games, which is absurd. <laughs> including I think 92 in 2010, 2009 yeah, so. maybe. 2009. Around there. He, he, he had a streak of 80, 80, 82, 86, yeah. 92. Something absurd yeah. where they just used him all the time earning the nickname perpetual pedro mm-hmm. um and he was damn good i think his career area was like a three five three uh somewhere around there in I'm, that not, ball I'm not park. sure i didn't look as up a lefty numbers. specialist yeah um one of my all-time favorite mets like i know i talk you know people talk about piazza they talk about keith hernandez Degrom, david right jose right you know pedro feliciano was so underrated, man. Sidearm lefty. He, one of the reasons why I wish I threw sidearm. Lefty. Him and Chad Bradford with the with the the submarine. <laughs> Sub. I always wanted to be like those in little league. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I mean Pedro Feliciano passing away at the age of forty five. Uh, yeah. Career WAR of five point seven. Not bad. Not bad for a reliever. For a reliever who pitched in 484 games? Yeah, I mean, really, his the bulk of his career really was 06 to 10 because he only had one more in 2012, right, where he came back. Um, the 2012? Yeah. 2012. Uh, 2013. 2013. And uh, he was up in 04, 03, 04, right? And uh, 02, 02, 03, 04, yep. Yeah. And then in 05, he went over to Japan, but he wasn't, he wasn't good those first three years. And then goes to Japan, he comes back and, you know, he was the arguably the best reliever in the Mets bullpen uh, of 2006, you know, that team that was really ERA of 2.09, 209. Yeah. I think it was a low three in 08, right? 303. 3.09, a whole run. 3.09. Yeah. He was, you know, he was dominant and, he, uh... let, let me read you some numbers here from Pedro Feliciano. Yeah, let's hear it. 06 to 2010. Career, uh, an ERA of 3.09 in that, that those five years? Four. Four seasons, okay. Are you counting 2010? Was he good 06, in 2010? 06 and 2010. This oh, okay. The bulk so that's, of the games. That's, that's, yeah, that's five years. Really the bulk of his career. 408 games. Mm-hmm. Finished 63 of them. An out shy of 300 innings. That's in four seasons, 06, 07, 08, five seasons. Yeah. Which is absurd for a reliever. 300 innings in five seasons. Mm-hmm. Only allowed 22 home runs. Kept the ball in the ballpark. It's pretty good. 280 strikeouts and almost 300 innings. Mm-hmm. Faced 1,290 batters. For an ERA plus of 136. And what was his ERA? His ERA plus in 2006 was what, 210, 213, something like that, right? 06, 210. It was yep. 210? Yeah, ridiculous. Absurd. You know, it's, he's, uh, he was uh, just, just maybe, maybe, I feel like he was maybe even a little underappreciated during his playing days, you know? Oh, yeah. Uh, I love them. You know, I always felt comfortable when he was coming in compared to some guys, Aaron Heilman, you know. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I mean, he'll be. That, yeah, this one, 
That yeah. one hits home. He was jet skiing yeah. with his family the day before. Yeah. No. Uh, he was diagnosed in 2013 with a small hole in his heart. Really? Don't know if that had anything to do with his unfortunate passing. Um, yeah, no uh, no word on it. There weren't really any details past cause, sleep. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But, yeah, thoughts and prayers to Pedro's family, friends, and former teammates, obviously, because actually one of my friends met him really? last game of the year, last home game of the year this year. She told me that that's I right. Was very, very jealous because I love Pedro they, Feliciano, one of they, my all time favorite Mets. They put him up on the screen. I remember that. They did. Yep. Yeah. And uh, you know, she actually met him outside of City Field and he threw her a follow on Insta and all this stuff. And it's like, this guy was a man of the people. You know, I thought he would make a damn good coach. Um, His brother was a coach with the Angels. He was, right? Yeah. Uh, 19 and 20. Yeah. But either way, thoughts and prayers to his family. Yes. I think he has three kids. Yeah. Um, so wishing the best for them in their grieving process, even though they'll probably never end up hearing this, but still. Yeah, but uh, bless. just bless sucks. David Wright said he's never seen a lefty specialist command a locker room. Yeah. Like Pedro did. I mean, it makes sense. Like this, yeah. You know, I'm not I'm not surprised whatsoever. You know, it was Although, also a very I, Latin I, I will team. admit, yeah, I will admit, I do have a, a special appreciation for him signing with the Yankees, taking their money, and not pitching an inning for them. <laughs> Forgot about that. That would hurt when he went over the Yankees. I won't lie. <laughs> yeah. So, anyway. Anyway. R.I.P. Pedro Feliciano. Mm-hmm. Gone way too soon. Thoughts and prayers to his family. Um, on to more pleasant news. Well, unless you're a fan of the Phillies, Marlins, Nationals, and Mets, really. Astros. The Atlanta Braves. Uh, the Astros, yeah. The Atlanta yeah. Braves are your 2021 World Series champions. Forget about them. Yes. Um, that fucking sucks. <laughs> Does it? <laughs> well, considering I was rooting for the Astros, I had Astros in six. I, I, it sucks for me. Um, right. But I did want to, before we get into it. <laughs> be careful. Be, I don't want us getting canceled because of the Fuck chop. that. Fuck them. Fuck that. Um, Anyway, love the chop, anyway. chop on, baby. Let's go. Before I get it, we get into all this. I do want to make a point because it has pissed me off severely watching everyone root against the Astros <laughs> simply because they are cheaters. Now, let me educate you people. The Astros did cheat. Yes, they did. The Astros were punished. Yes, they were. Did the punishment fit the crime? No. We all know that. And they'll be offered them immunity. They took full advantage of that. Bada bing, bada boom, players weren't punished. Okay. We talked about last episode. Is it kind of time to move forward from this? Um, I personally am like, let's get over it. Let's, let's focus on the actual game. These guys are good players. Mm-hmm. They've shown that. Obviously, rough World Series for Correa, Bregman. Uh, Altuve kind of broke out of it later on in the series. Yeah. But uh, a rough World Series for them, nonetheless. Jordan Alvarez, an atrocious World Series. Uh, but these guys are good players. Mm-hmm. There's no doubt in that. That being said, back to the initial point of rooting against them because they are cheaters. Let me just explain something to all of you wonderful idiots. Um. The Atlanta Braves were caught cheating, actually, in 2017 to the point where their former GM, who really built this World World Series roster for the most part, the the core of it, Mm -hmm. was banned for life. John Coppola was banned for life. 
and the Braves are stripped of 12 prospects. And at the time, it was an unprecedented punishment. And this is from the Los Angeles Times. For what the league said was a three-year circumvention of international signing rules. Long story short, the Braves kind of play with the numbers to be able to use money or more money, send more money internationally and, and, and sign higher guys, better guys, blah, blah, blah. The big name really in this all was uh, Kevin Maton. Venezuelan mm-hmm. shortstop at the time was 17, who then was kind of released, and I forgot where he went. I don't remember who picked him up. But he's 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 on the cusp of of the majors, actually. Is he? I think I believe so. Uh, 20 years old. I think I think I heard some some rumblings. Um anyway. John Coppolella joins Pete Rose. Uh, former Cardinals scouting director Chris Correa, which was another issue with the hacking scandal. Mm-hmm. I don't know if you remember that one. And Henry Mejia, who actually got his ban reversed. Hasn't played a pitch again at all, but still. No. Uh, as the only players to be banned from Major League Baseball. The only players, the only people to be banned from Major League Baseball. So to tell me that you're rooting for the Atlanta Braves. Because the Astros cheated, I cannot take you seriously. The guy who built the core of this World Series roster, you know, he helped uh, draft Freeman, I, I believe. Um, so he so he acquired Max Fried and Danzy Swanson in trades. Ian Anderson, AJ Minter, and Austin Riley were all drafted during a time period where he had rather significant power. Um, so, I mean, that alone is a huge chunk of why the, the, the Braves won the World Series this year. Um, In addition to Jorge Soler having the series of a lifetime, Eddie Rosario having the NLCS of a lifetime. Okay. And Anthopolis obviously making the right moves of the deadline, but like the mm-hmm. core itself, I believe Acuna and Albies were already in the system, so he I probably had Acuna would have been 2016. So yes, he was right. He had his no. handprints all over. 2014. That. 2014. So he was still in the organization until since 06, though, right? Yes. So therefore, but, he you know the product of that. So so here's the issue or the uh, the fault in that argument. What the fuck do they have to do with that? What do you mean? What do these players have to do with that? They have nothing to do with that. Oh, no, absolutely nothing. Now, I understand. Whereas that it's directly the Astros. It is directly Carlos Correa. It is directly Jose Altuve. These, these are the guys that actually did it. None of these Braves players actually did that. Again, I understand that, and, and you're right. You know, it's it's a little, it's very different. As, as you and I talked about this, mm-hmm. very different. But the premise of I don't like the Astros because they cheated. Well, the Braves cheated too. The organization cheated. It's, it's very different, though. The, the Cardinals, it, they cheated. It, you know, the Yankees, the Red Sox, they all cheated. It's been known. It's caught. You know. Yeah. You, you, the the but the moral high ground they, has there's to stop. There's a difference between cheating on the field and cheating in the front office, though. Right. I'm not that. saying I'm not saying that either has any integrity. These both have both have zero integrity. But and again, I do think it's it's a part of does the punishment fit the crime? And with the ad shows, it did not because as oh. you said, it's the players directly, and they were offered full immunity, therefore they couldn't have been punished. Yep. So do I do I understand where the anger is coming from? Yes. Mm-hmm. Do I think Oh, Ashes are cheaters. Oh, wah, 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 wah. Really? Just get over it. It happened. They were granted, they, they took advantage of the immunity. They were granted, you gotta get over it. What, what, what if it was the Phillies, though, per se? Oh, would you be, they, they would not shut the fuck up. Hold, hold, hold on, hold on. Would you, would you feel the same way, though? Because you like the Astros and you've liked the Astros for I, probably about a decade. So yeah. it, it, the contrast is. Having it be a division rival? Yeah. 
a team that you actually do not like? Is there a difference? Well, that would only make the, me hate them more. Now, don't get me wrong. I like the Astros, yes. Do I think what they did was right? Mm-hmm. No. Do I think they cheated? Yes. Did I think from the beginning? Yes. I mean, let's be real. The evidence was all there. You couldn't deny that. If it was a team like the Phillies, yeah. same exact situation as the Astros. Same exact situation. I would hate the players more than okay. the organization itself. So, I don't think people understand. hate the organization, really. I think people mostly hate the players. Well, I mean, you look at guys like Brantley, uh, Kyle Tucker. They're getting the, the shit at the end of this. They, because... they weren't there. That, right, but that's just being a part of the team, though. Right, that's being on the same team the as Carlos Correa. That's being on the same team as Jose Altuve, Yuli Gurriel. So now, now Alex here's Bregman. my question. Now, now, here's where it gets interesting, and we're, we're straying from the World Series a little bit. But a guy like Carlos Correa, mm-hmm. obviously, is going to be at high demand this off season. Yes, we'll get to that. Um, but as a fan of, and, and this is where I would love to have Maca here today, a fan like the Yankees. Mm-hmm. A fan base that's incredibly outspoken uh, against the Astros and these players. Mm-hmm. Oh, sign Correa, sign! I just dropped my through my pen. <laughs> sign Correa, sign, sign everyone. Well, hold on a second. Let's pump the brakes a little bit. Sign Correa, you were booing the living hell out of him. Oh, because he's a cheater. Suddenly, because he's willing to take your money, I, I I think I think the problem with Correa more so has to do with his mouth, him doubling down, him being the guy who jumped into the fire and fucking right. brought a backpack of gasoline. Really, I mean, you know, I feel like that was more so to do with the Correa hatred because yeah, Altuve got shit. That's because he's he's good. You know how much shit did Yuli Gurriel really get? throughout the year compared to them. And, but he, and it, I mean, I saw something. Uh, Marwin Gonzalez is really the biggest benefactor. Yeah, well. From all that, of this, and he. That's, a, that's an obvious standpoint. The guy sucked for fucking years, and then he gets randomly fucking good. Come on. I mean, he was he was obviously, uh, obviously a, a big, a big uh, contributor to this, so. And then he won a World, World Series with the, the Red Sox the next year, right? Was he with the Sox that Did year? Was no, I think he was with the Twins. Oh, it might have, might have been like 2019 with the Sox. And last year he was with the Sox. Yeah. And this year. But, uh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's, uh, but yeah, we strayed a little bit from the World Series. Uh, Jorge Soler, World Rumbles. Series MVP. Yes, sir. You want to talk about a World Series for the ages? He went six or twenty. Yeah. Half of his hits were home runs, six ribbies, and they were clutch too. It wasn't like they were just any old hits; they were clutch hits. Yeah, I mean, he was the he hit a homer to lead off the fucking World Series. First player ever in 117 different 117th World Series. First yep. player ever to do that. Yeah, and I think Crazy. he was the first player to also lead off a World Series as well, or lead off a, a playoff series with a home run, and hit a grand slam, I believe. Okay. In the same series. I don't, I'm not sure if that's 100% I haven't correct. heard that, but... I, I think I, I thought I saw that somewhere. Wouldn't, wouldn't be surprised. I could be wrong. Or maybe it was some... Or maybe to go back to back to take the lead or something like that. Maybe. I forgot uh, what it was. Because he, he, he did he, hit a grand slam in the World Series, right? Uh, I'm not sure. I believe his three homers were literally the only reason he has six RBIs. Because I don't well, think he had RBIs. That, it numbers. would have to be. He would have to have... He would have had... Three home runs, six RBIs. It'd have to be two solo and a grand slam. Which was, I think was solo was a second back to back. The initial home run. I think he had a grand slam. No. It's it's been a, it's been a few few weeks. It's been a few no. Weeks. So it's the lead off the game, the back to back with Dansby, and then the fuck Dansby, the fucking out of the park in game six. So then it was. Well, that wasn't a grand slam. Nope. Duvall hit a grand slam. Duvall hit the grand slam. Thank you. Yes, that's yeah. who it was. Duvall I knew hit someone. A, hit a few home runs. He, he was 
he was probably uh, you know up there top five for mvp oh yeah but uh but can we, can we talk about that absolute piss missile that solar hit love it in houston it, you know i mean mlb uh, network shoving it down the throats i know you don't have it but shoving it down the throats of everyone if you watched mlb network over the past uh two weeks well if you watched mlb network last week uh the albert pujols home run yeah in Houston from 05. In 05. Yeah. yeah they do they were non-stop shoving that down the throats of everyone or was that 04 i don't remember what year that was now one of those two but yeah oh brad lidge right yes i think that was 05 because lidge was perfect in 05 right what lidge was like perfect in 05 i think yeah something like that i don't, I think I don't that, remember yeah uh, yeah but brad they, lidge talk about serious reliever jeez they, they just kept on showing that shit non-stop dude Jorge Soler is the third midseason acquisition mm-hmm. to win World Series MVP. Can you name the other two? Midseason. Er, wait, say it again. Midseason. He's the third midseason acquisition. Acquisition. To win the World Series MVP. Can you name the other two? No. Okay, I'll, I'll give you a hint. We did yeah. mention. We mentioned the team. One of the the most recent one. We mentioned that team recently in talking about the cheating, oh. actually. Oh, shit. I don't remember who won, honestly. Who won 2018, Steve Pierce. Okay. And 1969. Oh, fire. Don Clendenon. Isn't it Clendenon? Maybe. I, I've heard it both ways. I don't know. Who knows? He does. <laughs> Interesting. Um, Didn't know that. He is also the second Cuban born player to win the World Series MVP. To who? Who who the other one is? I don't know. I'm trying to find out. Not Yasiel Puig. Uh, no, it's not. And that was where my mind went. I'm trying to remember who else. Oh, Levon Hernandez in 97. Oh, okay. There you go. I knew about that. Yeah. They eventually they said it while they were talking to him. Yep. It was also yeah. in the next line if I kept reading. Um did you did you watch yeah. every game? Um I didn't watch every out of every game, but I watched no, I tried well, you, to watch you watched every though. game. You like saw to, yeah. you saw you saw every game though. I, I mean believe so. We we were together for game five. Five what was yeah. that? Game five, yeah. What was, no, it, Halloween? was it Halloween? What was Halloween? No, day before. Halloween was game five. So we were there for game we get hang out game, game five. four. That no, game four. Brutal Halloween party. No, it was Saturday. Four. We'll be game four. Yes, yeah, so Saturday was game four. Yeah. Because the, the the stand of the cancer stuff, which I absolutely love yes. them, that yes. they do that. Yes. Sunday was Halloween, which was game five. Yes. In Atlanta, which they lost. Yes. So we were together for game four at that god awful Halloween party. Yes. Where you went dressed as a serial killer, which was always an elite costume. Um, what, that was a weird night. Anyway, redneck. You were a redneck. I went with so. comfort. Okay. I went with absolute comfort, which I realized we haven't, haven't recorded since before Halloween's. I didn't get a chance to throw on the stitch onesie for the podcast yeah. next week. All right. Next week. No, no, I can't walking around wearing a onesie in November is just weird, man. No, it's appropriate. It's cold out nice and snuggly. Anyway, I I thought it was one of the better world series. Uh, yes. You know, over yes. the past, I mean, yeah, I feel like just because of last year, last year I was, you know, me personally, anyway, starving for a real world series and uh i watched at least a few innings of every game this year uh, uh of, the, of the playoffs and world series uh probably the first time that i've done that in i couldn't even tell you uh it was also we had a different team in the nl too it, was, it wasn't the dodgers were there it wasn't yeah. you know because the dodgers were in 
What? Three. Three of the last 17, six? 18, so that's five. 20. Yep. Yeah. I mean, the it's the Dodgers and the Astros. You pretty much know they're going to the championship series. The right. Dodgers, I mean, you sent me it earlier. The the Dodgers play the, the Dodgers winner. Dodgers lost the <laughs> – yeah, no, they lost. Yeah, they lost or, or were you, the winner. To to win the World Series, you have to beat the Dodgers. That's really, that's that's the that's the outcome. Oh, since and, since 2016. And don't forget the finalists in 2015 as well, the Mets. Yeah, I don't know if I don't know if 2014 they had no. you know they, they lost to the Giants or not, but no. You know, it's I don't, I don't even know if they were there in 2014. I mean, they must have, but. I think they were. That was the beginning of the. I think the Giants were a wild card team. Uh, yeah, they were. I don't remember. It doesn't matter. Dodgers. It's irrelevant. Unless, yeah, I don't know. But uh, um, which was the year that Archie Bradley hit the triple uh, in the wild card game? I'll go with twenty, either seventeen or eighteen. Okay, because I don't remember. It was. It was. Diamondbacks Rockies, which is looking back, hindsight, Jesus Christ, how the hell did we let that happen? Um, yeah, I don't remember, but that was a fun one. Um, anyway, you know, let me ask you this. Yep. As a pitcher. Yep. Do you find that there's a slight bias towards hitters in in World Series voting? I mean, Tyler Matzik and, and sorry, not Sack. As he's affectionately known, I mean that dude is is absurd in October. Yeah, biggest balls on any pitcher I've ever seen. Oh yeah, came right at at every hitter, dude. Mm Mm-hmm. Had zero fear. Do you think there was a little bias? Uh, no. I think that that one inning in the World Series where uh, he kind of got fucked up by fucked by the defense and ended up giving up four runs in that one inning. Uh, I think that was really, you know, the, uh, the, the big issue with it, but it, yeah, the it's, there, yeah. yeah, it's also hard. Like, unless, unless it's a guy like, you know, like Madison Baumgartner in 2014, you know, where he was, uh, you know, he started two or three games or whatever it was. And then he was coming in relief, like every other fucking game, like, you know, that that deserves an MVP, right? Or Strasburg but, shoving in, yeah, 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 like yeah. Strasburg, yeah. Well, he came out of the bullpen too. Another ex- another good example, uh, right? You right. know, so so like that. It, uh, if it's like those, that, then those then are the, the last two pitchers to win World Series MVP. Yeah, I want to. I don't before know before that prior, but <laughs> but maybe Hamill maybe no wait. Oh, okay. Um, and uh. So you don't think there was a bias? No, I think it was appropriate. I think it was. Uh, yeah, I mean, it was. How, how could you not give it to Solaire? Really? No. I'm. I'm just asking because Matzik fucking shoved that three-headed monster of Matzik, Minter, and, and Smith. Yeah. You know that Filthy. was just what five runs of fifteen innings. Uh yeah. Correct. And Matt took out four of those in that one inning. Like, yeah, absolutely absurd. Yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. And uh, it, I believe that all started off because of a uh, a Dansby Swanson error too. So yeah, and then I think he walked a couple guys and yeah. So you know, it's uh, it w- wasn't it wasn't completely fault to his own. So. No, and I wonder if it was – how many of those were earned? Because um, I don't think any of them would have been uh, if it started out with an error. Three of the four, I believe, ended up being – I don't remember exactly. But either, either way, mm-hmm. um, Braves are World Series champs. Tyler Matzik has massive fucking balls. Yes. Um, Jorge Soler was the World Series MVP. Mm-hmm. Alex Antopoulos did a fantastic job crafting that roster at the deadline, getting what he needed to do. Weren't, they weren't big deals either. No. There were these small side deals, Jock October, you know. When you tell the story of this World Series, though, and, and this will be the last thing I have at least, is it's Hank Garren has his hampering all over this. Um, yeah. Between the relationship between him and Dusty, him and Snicker, and 
uh, cool fact that's been circulating on the internet, and it's true, and I looked this up. Mm-hmm. Before the All-Star break, the Braves won 44 games. Yes. After the All-Star break, the Braves won 44 games. Billy, what number did Hank Aaron wear? 44. I guess you could say those. This was meant to be. Yeah. 100%. I get. I, I think it was one of those. That this was just a team of fate. Yep. Uh, and Hank Aaron. Yeah. It's a shame that you know they couldn't. He couldn't really. He couldn't be there to, to enjoy it. But. Yeah, but you know. Oh, but, also a massive honor to Major League Baseball. Why? You take the All Star Game out of Atlanta, fuck you. We're just gonna win the World Series. Uh, yeah, I mean, they, you know, yeah, yeah. And, well, oh, uh, did you see the, um, and the cops um, trying to arrest Matzik at the parade? Yes, dude. By the way, did you see the fucking bus, dude? They were fucking flying, dude. Fucking zooming, and dude. All of them, the trucks behind them that were having the had like you know whatever players were in were in the pickup trucks. The trucks, yeah, fucking flying too, dude. They were booking it. What? Why? It was so like, what's weird. What's the point of that? Yeah, I saw. I, you I might mean, where's the sound? Everything's a little slowed down a little <laughs> bit. You know, you would think, hey, you know, slow it down, enjoy it. It's it's Atlanta. You know, just enjoy the day. Yeah, you would expect you... like the fucking, you know, if the Mets won the World Series, buses are booking it because you can't <laughs> stop. You can't stop Manhattan traffic. You can't. You can't do that. Did, did you see that uh, some guy, he was showing the, uh, the video of it, and he goes, uh, you want to know how you could tell Atlanta hasn't had a championship in 25 years? And they show the video. This bus driver has no idea how to do a parade, dude. He's fucking flooring it. <laughs> like, dude, that's... Remember, Atlanta sports have not done well recently in championships. No. This but... guy did not expect to have to do this. <laughs> but... <laughs> yeah, the guy was the like Falcons, the Bulldogs. The, the guy was like, also it was I think it I think it was the longest uh in like miles. It was like a three mile parade. parade, right? Yeah, I think well, that's they so... had it in I think Fulton County and the city of Atlanta. So they yes. had like kind of keep it it with it like so in a, a certain they, radius. They went from like I, I forgot where in Atlanta, but then they had to go to Truist Park. Yep. So it was a huge, huge, you like, dude, Massive so, far, so far. So the guy, the guy was like, either this guy fucking forgot to take a shit before he went. And now he's really fucking <laughs> regretting it. Or he just has no idea what he's doing. Cause oh, dude, God. he had to be going like 30 miles an hour. Like, dude, you're yeah, supposed you to go like 15. Meanwhile, generously. Dan's be fucking caught a beer yes. while they're booking it. Yeah. Oh. Still fuck Dansby. I don't like Dansby. <laughs> That's just a personal thing. I don't know why. I still don't know why I don't like Dansby. Yeah. Hey, you know what? You want to know what's even more fucked up? Last week or two weeks ago now, actually, you you said that I looked like Dansby with the hair. I was like, fuck that. Fuck you. You, you. you yeah, you were growing your you hair. Said, a little you said bit, with the hair and the beard. A little scruff, a little bit. Yeah. yeah no, fuck, you you had a little Dansby esque. Um, do um, you have any other final, yeah. final notes? Fuck the cop who tried to arrest Matzik. Yes. Fucking dumbass. Fuck the, the parade bus driver. Fucking dumbass. <laughs> and fuck, man. Fuck Dansby. <laughs> no, but seriously, congrats to the Atlanta Braves, their fans. Um, and Freddie Freeman. I, I mean, yeah. we went the Deserves entire it. segment here without talking about him. Yeah. Freddie Freeman. You know, it was, it was the since. last run of the World Series, too. Hit, hit the and home run like in the it. seventh inning of game six. Took a note out of Anthony Rizzo's uh, playbook and pocketed that ball. Iconic, that last another, another iconic photo. Just, uh, yeah. yeah, just uh, all around. It was, it was a very good World Series, very competitive throughout. Very. Um, yeah. And you know what? I, I'm, I'm, as Mac has said, said to us earlier in the group chat, you know, I miss baseball already. Yeah, yeah, me too. 100%. Um, I just have one, one final note and that's <laughs> just so you remember 
Trust me. I, 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 it's, yeah, I know. All right. So that wraps up the season. What a wonderful season it was. Congratulations to the Atlanta Braves and all their fans. Let's move on to the off season. And, uh, a lot of players are now free agents, and uh, I already hate the off season. <laughs> and I already uh, hate it. But well, uh, we'll we'll talk about the qualifying offers. Yes, I do have it up. I, oh, cool. I did at least. Um, there it is. So you I want to read off the names? Four, I believe fourteen players. Yeah. Got a QO, and mm-hmm. the qualifying offer was set at eighteen point four. I believe. Yep. So the premise of a qualifying offer, a team offers a one-year contract, $18.4 million is preset, I think, based the on the average. average of the top 25 paid players. Have 30, right? Yeah. I th- yeah. It might even be fucking 50. I'm not sure. I know it's like the top a certain amount of players. Top X, yeah. It's the average of those guys. And you can't get a qualifying offer if you've received one prior, mm-hmm. which – was why you will see a guy like Marcus Stroman get it. Right. Um, and there are actually some interesting names here. Starting sure. with Rizal Iglesias from the mm-hmm. Angels getting a qualifying offer. Now, he had a strong season. Yeah. Uh, and he probably will command a multi year deal yes. with the way that relievers are, you know, need, the need for relievers these days. I wouldn't be surprised if he does accept the QO. Hmm. As a just a, a security blanket, getting that salary this year, yeah. Because but, relievers, you can be so it's to be so volatile. That's the thing, though. What if what if he's shit next year? Yeah, you know. It, so it, it, is he willing to bet on himself? And and I wouldn't be surprised if he takes it, but I'm also not counting on him to take it. I, I don't think he'll take it. I think he'll go with the long term money. Yeah. Uh, the uh, obvious one here is Carlos Correa getting one from the Astros. Obviously, he turned it down already, <laughs> and they already lowballed him with an offer five years, one sixty. Yep. Um, which I think, if you look at Altuve's deal, it's six for one fifty. Yes, it's relatively the same thing. I mean, I, I understand trying, trying, given, but that's just kind of an insulting offer. Hmm. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, you know, just I guess hope for the hometown discount, really, and. See where see where that goes. Try to yeah. uh, lowball the shortstop market as of right now too. So, yeah, and you got to remember what Lindor Lindor set this market last March, back in March, with by, by what one, twelve for three forty one, right? Yes, by one million, yeah. Over Tatis he set this. He and Tatis set this market. Yes. So these guys are going to be looking for for three hundred plus. Yeah. Especially especially considering Lindor had a horrible year. By, yeah. by Lindor standards, but that could hurt them. Teams might be weary, right? It's it's and, and also you look at a lot of these guys. How, how many of them are actually going to stick at shortstop for a long for long term? I mean, right. Gray, well, uh, let me go through. Let me go through the list and then. <laughs> all right. Before we get ahead of ourselves, but yes. <laughs> uh, here's an interesting one that I, I I like this move. Justin Verlander, getting a qualifying offer. Mm-hmm. Thirty eight years old wants to pitch at least forty five. Mm-hmm. Um, actually threw a bullpen for teams. Yeah, a handful of scouts. Weekend. Went. Yeah, a couple days. Twenty-five ago. scouts were there. The Mets sent two. He's, he's had preliminary talks with the Yankees as, as well as some other teams. Obviously, it looks like he's going to decline the qualifying offer. But a very interesting concern. He not necessarily zero uh. innings last year coming back from Tommy John surgery. Um, and again, 38 years old, definitely a, an interesting move from the Astros. I don't blame them necessarily, given that starting pitching did fail them this postseason. Mm-hmm. And Ver, if Ver, I, I strongly believe that if Verlander's healthy, this World Series is totally different. You can say the same thing about Charlie Morton and Mike Soroka. Yeah. Lance McCullough. And, yep. You know, you have those four guys. It, it's, I, I think it's you're really it, looking at a better World Series. It, well, much more low scoring, you'd imagine. But you right, know we're, what? I can't we're, we're done with the World Series. This. No, no, I have to bring up one thing. Can Zach Granke 
What fucking about? legend. Oh, yeah. The last Finch pitcher hit. to ever get a hit. Yeah. Most likely. Well, so, yeah, so not definitely. Zach, Zach Granke, you fucking legend. <laughs> Still um, needs that home okay. run and stolen base. Yeah. Hopefully soon. Freddie Freeman getting a qualifying off from the Braves. Obviously, that's just a formality. You knew it was coming. Mm-hmm. He's probably going to look for the money. Obviously, 18.4 is on the lower end of what he's expecting to get. Yeah. 12 years in, though, so I don't know. I, it'll be interesting to see what he gets mm-hmm. in terms of the lane. Robbie Ray from the, the Toronto Blue Jays getting a qualifying offer. Um, Cy Young candidate, top three. Led the lead strikeouts and mm-hmm. really just reinvented himself and, and gave his career a nice kickstart up in Toronto. They're going to look to keep him. Uh, he's going to look to probably get paid big time off of one year. Blue Jays also tendered Marcus Simeon a qualifying offer. Yep. So, I mean, also an MVP finals for the second time in three seasons or four seasons, maybe. Nah, I can't um, remember now. With the, the COVID year fucks everything up. Yeah, I know. Simeon had an insane year uh, uh, with 40 plus home runs, 100 plus RBIs, and I think he hit like 280, 290. Right? Uh, Yeah, something like that. I don't remember numbers off the top of my head, honestly. He's an interesting case because he was on a one-year bridge deal. Yeah. Bet on his Betting gambling, on, himself, on himself. Yeah. And it paid off. Yeah. Uh Corey Seeger, another one of those sort of shortstops you mentioned, getting QO from the Dodgers. Chris mm-hmm. Taylor getting a qualifying off from the Dodgers. This one kind of threw me threw me off for a minute. No surprise. Uh a name not Best here player. from the Dodgers is Clayton Kershaw. Yeah. Well, we'll get there. Hold on. Just an interesting. Nah, we'll get there. Relax. Uh, all right. All right. Uh, Brandon Belt getting a qualifying offer from the Giants. I think he'll probably end up taking it. You'd imagine. I'm not sure what the market's looking like for first baseman, especially a guy his age. And here's where the pain comes in. Michael Conforto getting Pretty a qualifying offer from the Mets. Already declining. He's a Boris client. This will be very interesting to see how this plays out. Had a down year. Could have bet on himself and taken that one year deal and try and to stock bet himself, his, but re up his value. Um, uh, I wouldn't rule out a return, but I also wouldn't put money on it. Well, yeah, and we'll we'll get to that next week. Next week we'll have yeah, a yeah, uh, yeah. we'll do a little more we'll in depth our, stuff. Well, we'll do no next next week. Snow Syndergaard got a QO and it. All signs are pointing to him accepting it uh, from his social imagine, media activity. I, Hasn't hasn't pitched in two years and only hit, well sorry he's had two innings in two years so yeah I, 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 Red Sox gave not. Eduardo Rodriguez a qualifying offer who has been arguably trash their most reliable starter he's been arguably and that's not even arguable win a lot of, they win he's a been, lot of his starts yes they do that's because they have a fi- fucking dy- dynamic fucking offense dynamite offense explosive it is elite he yeah. is fucking garbage uh nick castellanos by the way opted out of his deal yep. only for the reds to offer him a qualifying offer <laughs> which is interesting because there are now reports saying the reds are looking to get rid of anybody making significant money this is has to be for the draft pick only yeah yeah of course how much of a fuck you would it be if castellanos yeah. accepts it He's not gonna. Yeah, no. he had he one had of the best year. offensive years this year and led. Uh, he's had 40 plus doubles over the past four seasons, I think, excluding 2020, it's obviously. Insane, yeah. Uh, crazy. Yeah, he'll, he'll get a the, nice long term deal. Yeah. At 28, 29, I think. Or is he 31? He is. Is he 29 or 30? Yeah. And the last one to get a qualifying off. Obviously, another short stuff we talked about. Trevor Story from the Rockies. They decided yep. to hold on to him, and they'll get the draft pick compensation when he inevitably leaves. Now, I mentioned Kershaw. Yep. And another name that surprised me, at least, not getting a QO was John Gray from the Rockies. You think there was so? tons of talk about maybe trading him, uh, re-signing him. All signs were at the deadline were at least pointing that they were trying to resign him. Mm-hmm. And there was talks about that, and obviously we haven't heard anything about it. 
I mean, so he's still to, be, obviously, to lose a guy who is a rock solid starter, he's got great potential. For nothing. It, interesting move from the Rockets. I mean, an eighteen. I understand not, is not nothing. What eighteen point four is not nothing. Well, I said lose him for nothing. Oh, 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 gotcha. Right. I understand not wanting to pay that, especially. Yeah, but he's like definitely going to take. Always it, trying to keep you know, payroll close, but low. Yeah. You're talking about a guy who. You know, he hasn't been great numbers wise. So, yeah. But he was a top three draft pick, if I'm not mistaken. And so, yeah. You know, where, you know, I, I don't know. We'll, we'll see what happens with him. But, uh, that one was an interesting one to me. Um, I, I think it these, makes sense because he's obviously going to take it. Right. Did any of these stand out to you? Offered? Any so. Any surprises? Yeah, offered, not offered. No, just ones that we talked about. And uh, Kershaw, talk about that now if you would like. Yeah, I mean, with Kershaw, it's interesting because all I ever see is Kershaw and Dodger Blue. Mm-hmm. Um, another one. That's you look like you're about to cry. Me. You okay? No, I was thinking. Yeah, I was thinking. Max Scherzer didn't get one either. He can't. Oh, Mitzi's acquisition, right? Yep. Traded. Gotcha. Yeah. I was trying to think about that one real quick. Yeah. Um. But Kershaw not getting a qualifying offer means either the Dodgers know something about his injuries, which have been popping up more and more often lately, um, which you hate to see because the guy has is the best of our generation. No doubt. Yeah, he was a Hall of Famer. Yeah. As soon as he threw that pitch for 10 years, he was in the Hall of Fame. Like, yep. There's no doubt about that. Yep. Um, but it's interesting that the Dodgers are going to try and, and potentially move on from Kershaw. I can't no. see him anywhere else. They're not going to. I mean, the if they actually let him test the market, the one team that is a threat to do it is the Rangers. Talking about yeah, it's been, a team with a ton of money. They they they're also gonna they watch out for Trevor Story. You know, John Daniels still running things down there. It, they they got a ton of money. They've been saving up. They have a ton a ton of money right now, and they know that they they're have a good young core coming through. I think with uh um, lighter Josh Young, Jack Lighter, Sam yeah. Huff behind the plate, Adolis yep. Garcia. Yeah. So there's some watch, good pieces down. Watch Texas. out and. Uh, Kershaw's from that area, so mm-hmm. uh, that if there is going to be anyone that takes him, it's going to be them. That takes him, sorry, it's going to be yeah. them. You know, and uh, but I I just, I just can't see it. I think the Dodgers are going to work something out with him. You know, can you really? Do you see him moving on or the Dodgers? I can't. I just think that if it does, I mean, Texas obviously it's something we've that's been linked for a while now. Mm-hmm. Like you've heard these rumors popping up uh, as recent as early as March, really. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, the Rangers are all going to be all in on pitching. The Angels are looking to be all in on pitching as well. Which, <laughs> listen, they proved it in this draft. Uh, they proved it in this draft this year. Doesn't mean shit. So they're looking to add an impact starter. Uh, the Blue Jays are looking to add another starter. I mean. So oh, pitching is going to be at a who, who premium. Isn't? Everyone's this looking for pitching. Season. I so. believe the GM meetings start this week, or for the Mets, the non-GM meetings. So, yeah, uh, I, th- I think San- Sandy and Stevie are there. I mean, listen, you got to bring out the big guns. Uh, oh, they, that's their entire report- fucking front office. <laughs> <laughs> right. They reported that the Mets plan to talk to Boris regarding Chris Bryant at yes. the Western meetings. Now, if you're talking to Boris... Let's work something out with Conforto, please. I'm sure they will. Because you and I were there the last game of the year, and I was damn near ready to cry towards the end of that game. He, he was crying. I was there for Conforto's debut in 2015 against the Dodgers. I was there the next day. You were there with his first hit. Yep, that infield hit. You know, and, I, and then we were both there for what could have been the last game as a Met, and that one... Yeah, nobody's. He reminds me a lot of David Wright. He reminds me a lot of David Wright in the way he goes about his business, a quiet leader. If 
not wanting the attention on him. If you recall, I mean, I wish we were doing this back then because back then I used to I used to say Michael Conforto is a lefty David Wright. Yep. That's what he is. It's exactly what he is. in baseball. So. Um, all right. So that's going to hurt. Who, that's going to hurt. Who Who do you think do, does accept the qualifying offer, if any? I, I believe it's like a 10% success rate of guys. Not no, even. If that, yeah. It's how many? I, mean, I think the Mets will go back to back with Stroman last year and Syndergaard this year. Syndergaard. I do think Brandon Belt will accept. I I agree. Anybody else? I, the only other one possibly I can see it is Eduardo Rodriguez. I see. I see Eduardo Rodriguez. Um, I also see him maybe saying no, getting a testing the market and end up back with the Red Sox regardless. Could have happened too. I think that's probably um, more likely. That might be the route he takes. Because he was pretty I good in the playoffs. Though, I'll give him yes. that. Yes. I'll give him that much. And the only other one that I see that with a possibility is Verlander. Yeah. But he was hit he was such a ninety eight with in the bullpen that he, he was, I thought it was 96. Team. Somewhere in that range. I think he's sitting 95, 96. But, but, but I think he's top in 97, 98, maybe. I don't know. I, I, I'm just I, what I saw. What I'm saying yeah, is I'm what I saying, saw is he well, topped top out at 95, head, yeah, 96. Yeah, yeah. That's okay. where he was sitting. But hmm. I, either one of us could either, be wrong. Either way, <laughs> one of us is wrong. Years, at 38 years old. Yes. Coming off of Tommy John topping in the night, high upper night, mid to upper 90s. Yep. I don't blame him for wanting to test his value. I also know he's comfortable in Houston. You know, he's, he's made it very much known that he's comfortable in Houston and he's enjoying it there. Yeah. You know, exactly. it's, it's a sustained winner, which will be interesting to see what they do in terms of replacing Correa. Because Correa is all but certainly gone. Uh, the other option is Trevor Story. Wouldn't that be something? If they replace I would, Correa with one of the other guys? I, I mean... Well, what's your other option? I don't think they have anybody really that's yeah. going to fill the shoes of Carlos Correa. Um, I mean, we'll see. We'll see what happens. But uh, uh, it, I, I think it's probably going to be one of those two. Pitching too. Yeah. I mean. Granky's um, also a free agent. Yeah. What team doesn't, like, like I said before, what team doesn't need pitching? Every team needs pitching. The Dodgers that's, don't. That's just, who? The Dodgers really don't. They they do. Who do they have right now? That's true. That's true. Free agent, right? Walker right. Bueller. I mean, and Urias. Geez. And Urias. Well, Dustin May will be coming back. Yes, he will totally eventually. Until literally just I now. I think he's not expected back until May though, or June. Right. right. So, um, but who Ronson, knows? I mean, and, we were told. It is, it is a lot. We were told. They, flexibility they have. We were told the same thing with Noah Syndergaard, that he would have been ready by, you know, and Luis Severino. Luis Severino. You know, they, we were expecting them back in, like, May, June. Yeah. And neither of them got back until August and September, you know. So, we'll see. We'll see how it goes. Any other notes on that? Least. It's, it'll, be, it'll be interesting because at the end of the day, it is a business. And the one thing that – is very much or should be very much on the forefront of everyone's mind is the CBA. Yes. Um, which, I mean, Andrew Heaney getting $8 million should tell you all you need to know from one of the most intelligent organizations when it, at the, when it comes, when you boil down to it. Andrew Heaney getting $8 million from the – eight and a half from the Dodgers. Yeah. And we haven't heard much about the CBA negotiations, which means hopefully all is well, Mm -hmm. or there's nothing going on. It's one of the two. Very interesting. I wonder what that means come December 1. Uh, Yeah, I mean, we'll see. (laughs) It's, uh, we, yeah, we, we get, very interesting to see. Yeah, well, we'll see what happens. I mean, that's, that's really, uh, that's really it. You know, we can, you can't really hold much value in a lot of things right now. Like we, we've obviously never dealt with this on the podcast. Uh, 
with the CBA. With CBA. Yeah. yeah so it, it's going to be different, but I'm, I'm glad that we're going to be able to cover it because it's going to be a very, very wild off season, um, especially for our favorite teams, the Mets and the Yankees, you know, so it's, By it's going to be. Yankees make a little noise off-season. too. What do you mean? Uh, pretty much getting, getting a deal done with Luis Rojas to be the third base coach. That's right. Yep, going cross, going cross town. Okay, listen, you can say what you want. I liked Rojas. I did. I thought he's first of all, he's a great baseball mind. I think he's a good I guy. Think he used a couple more years. Yes. But after all that time in the Mets organization, I thought he could be like a Brian Snicker. You know, spent all this time in the organization, then finally get his shot in one ring. Well, uh, maybe he'll come back. Maybe he'll come back. Who knows? Probably not. I feel I like it. that bridge is kind of burned after you do that, but we'll see. I mean, well, he he got shafted, man. He really did. He did, and Chili Davis had uh, some choice words about the uh, Mets hitting. And I still think they should bring back Chili. I think so too. Uh, the, enough Mets, though. Um, Dusty Baker getting a new one year yep. deal. Yep. Is this is this going to be his last year? You think? Uh just by it being a one year deal. I mean, they'll probably go year to year. I think that's really see, the idea behind it. See, we see yeah. what he wants to do because he came back with, you know, obviously he's coming back to try and win that world series. Finally. Um, I think, I think the biggest problem though, is that I think teams do get a little more motivated against the Astros. You know what I mean? Like I, but also the Astros get a little more motivated too. So eh, cancels each other out. Uh, we'll see. I don't think so. I think I think he'll probably come back for more. All right. Jace Tingler, after being fired by the Padres, uh, agreed to be a bench coach with the Twins. Interesting move, considering I don't think Jace Tingler is a very good coach at all. Um, <laughs> I mean, you have I that much... I'm just some schlub doing a podcast in his bedroom. Um, <laughs> you have that much talent, I mean. Have the worst record in the belly, second yeah. half. Seriously, come on. I mean, I know that they're pitching like Darvish got fucking railed when it come when it came to the fucking sticky substances, and but I mean, still, regardless, yeah. I mean, that's that's There's just some light news there. Uh, not too much going on other than that. Uh, uh, trying to think, if there's anything else I, I missed? Not that I know off the top of my head. Yeah. I'm- I'm good on on uh, the signings. Other, the only other real news these days. Oh, Tucker Barnhart got traded by the way to the Tigers. That's right. Just a little, are, you know, small small deal. Another team serious to to watch this all season. Definitely, definitely watch the Tigers and the Rangers. I was They're about to say, very... yeah, give me give me give me, me another third team to watch this all season because obviously the the hot stove is heating up early. You got the Rangers. You got the Mariners. Tigers. Now you had the you had the Reds too for a while. Mariners. Mariners have Make been reportedly easy. ready to spend. They have money. They say they have money. They say they're ready to spend the money. So they have a great young core. They'll be, they'll be a fun team. Fantastic to watch. core. They need a they need a few pitchers, and which shouldn't be hard to do to try and get some pitchers into there. Uh, they could also make a couple trades. I think they they could probably probably and most likely will trade like Jake Fra- say, you, Fraley. You say they can make trades. It's Jerry Depoto. He will make trades. Yes, but I'm saying like big time, like give away their prospects. They don't generally do that. I think okay. they're going. I think I think there's a good chance that they're in buy now, buy mode. Yeah, I think their offense is probably going to. Kikuchi is a free agent now, yep. and uh, I we'll see, we'll see. Uh, but those are my my three teams to uh, keep an eye on for this off season: I like Mariners, it. I like it, Rangers, Tigers, all in the AL. Yeah, I mean, nobody in the, in the NL is really uh, – Everyone, Everyone's looking to knock off the Astros in the AL. And in the NL, it's very split. Like, they're, the teams are either good or they're bad. You know what I mean? Or you're the Mets, where you should be good no, and you end bad. up being bad. They're just bad. The Phillies were the, the – Phillies and uh, – Yeah, the Phillies were like the one team right around 500. They were 82 and 80, yeah. I believe. So – and I think the the Reds were around 500 too. So. They were, but I think they were. I think they were. But they're in sell under. mode right now. Yes, they, yeah, yeah, they're done. Now nah, Castellanos leaving. They're gonna end up probably end up trading Winker. I'd imagine. Probably just Castillo, probably Castillo just, maybe. 
Yeah, he's he's they gotta they just gotta just get rid of him at this right, point. This is the third all season in a row. That yeah, they, yeah. Just um, either either compete or just get rid of everything. Like just to, like you have a you had a good core. Just do something. Pick one. That's it. You got you got any yeah. other teams? Talk about. I mean, I think you pretty much hit it on the head there. You yeah, ain't got a different team. A te- the Mets yeah, I tried to watch, but refrain from it's, it's, New York. Yeah. Uh, well, the Mets will be interesting to watch because they have the fucking front office. Yeah. Yep. Uh, I think the Yankees can be very interesting to see what they do with the plethora of shortstop. They've been linked to about three of them. Obviously, sticking in New York, they've been linked to a lot of these. But if you really think about it, these are two teams that are very interesting teams. The Mets having zero front office, no one yep. wanting to work for them, it seems like, yep. and having so many question marks. Strowman with with Conforto, with the depth, the pitching, you know, the, so many question marks. Mm-hmm. And with no leadership. Very yep. interesting with the Mets. With the Yankees, they've been linked to these three of these five shortstops almost regularly. Um, they have talked about continuously staying under the luxury tax. Obviously, Garrett Cole's contract two years ago kind of give them – looks like, okay, we're ready to play. We're ready, ready to pl- get back into it. Uh, DJ LeMay's extension – there are signs, obviously, trading for Rizzo. There are signs the Yankees are looking to get back to their old ways and spend some money. I think they'll be an interesting watch, especially considering Rizzo's a free agent. They still have Voight under contract, and Voight kind of wants out. Does he want out? And also, you know, any the big red flag for me was when they declined Brett Gardner's option. <laughs> and, uh, and put uh, Tim LaCastro on waivers, and uh, yeah, Greg Allen has gone too. What are they doing? Destroying this, the core of this team. Yeah, I mean that's <laughs> fucking. They're three outfielders. Man. Labor and Judge are growing out beards. Beautiful. Chaos in the Bronx. Beautiful. Um. Anyway, so moving on from the office, from the free agency, let's look back this year again with the awards. Uh, the finalists were announced for the main baseball writers awards: the Rookie of the Year, Manager of the Year. Cy Young and MVP, and we can go to the finalists in just a sec. But the gold gloves making history with some gold this year. The yep. St. Louis Cardinals, the first team ever to have five gold glovers from in one season. Yeah. I think it was Goldschmidt, Edmonds, Edmund, 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 Arenado, O'Neal, Bader, Bader, Arenado, and O'Neill. Yes, and shout out to Harrison Bader, man. Congrats to Bader. Uh, I, we knew I, it all along, and, and I I did call it to him last year when did we did you? Yeah, I said he's gonna win a Gold Glove next year. Well, I have to pull up the clip because you you were on a roll for a while. Um, <laughs> so congrats to them, and 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 congrats to our guy Bader. Um, yeah, actually, really cool stuff. It, it was it might have been a little hotter than that. Cause I'll, I'll be specific. I I did say platinum glove, but Gold Glove counts. So. We're we're good. Uh, All right, we, we Hank Aaron get the the gold glove plate. <laughs> Hank Hank Aaron Award. Uh, Bryce Harper won for the National League, and uh, Vladimir Guerrero Jr. won for the American League. Appropriately, both of them MVP finalists. Yep, and that's where we are. You want to run through the gold glovers real quick? The, the um, I can. Give me one sec. I'm gonna pull it up. I know Sean Murphy won. In Sean, the catcher, Sean Mur- which was pretty pretty cool. Sean Murphy, Yuli Gurriel. Marcus Semien. Matt Olson. Oh, sorry. Matt Chapman. Carlos Correa. Andrew Benintendi. Michael A. Taylor. Joey Gallo. And Dallas Keuchel. Uh, six of them Matt were Olsen first-time winners. didn't get a qualifying offer either, which is interesting. He's not a free agent. Oh, they just want to trade him. Yeah. Trade him next year. Uh, gotcha. Six of them were first time winners uh, Murphy, in Guriel, the, in the AL. Semyon, Correa, Benatendi, and uh, Michael A. Taylor were all first Correa time. They never won a gold glove? Nope. Oh, because the Cra- was the entire time. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Crazy, though, right? I was, I was a little surprised, too. That's wild. Okay. And uh, the, um, in the NL, the NL, Jacob Stallings. The, the entire Cardinals, Goldschmidt, Edmund, Arenado, Brandon Crawford, who stole the fucking gold glove, by the way, 
uh, Tyler O'Neill, Harrison Bader, <laughs> Adam Duvall, who you don't think of him as a gold glove guy. You don't think of him as a elite defender. The dude had a but fucking fantastic year. He had 19 defensive runs saved. That's and he had like 95 RBIs too, or 100 RBIs. Uh, 100. He was over 100. He led the nice, NL. Nice, well-rounded year. For Adam and then uh, Max Fried, back-to-back NL gold glove pitcher. I still don't agree with that. I think Stroman should have won it because Stroman made so many, so many great plays. He wasn't even a finalist. Actually, Ty- Taiwan Walker had the highest. What was he? Highest graded pl- uh, pitcher. Yeah, the high. Uh, it was like the he was the DRS best defensive. Or whatever it is. Yeah, yeah, I forget what it was. But uh, Brandon Crawford uh, just totally robbed the. I really don't know how he got it. Uh, I mean, he, he had a good, definitely. A, he's a, he's a good defender, yeah. but when you're talking about fucking Nick Ahmed and Francisco Lindor, how Nick Ahmed? What he wasn't even a finalist. I don't believe. I got the finalist right here. No, Kevin Newman was the third one. Lindor had was second in the MLB in outs above average. With twenty five, he had, dude, he had twenty five. He had ten That's more. Missing like thirty games too. Yeah, he had 10 more outs above average over Brandon Crawford. And he had more. Brandon Crawford only had six defensive runs saved. I believe Lindor had 12. We can't have nice things. Like, what did did they just say? We have nice things. They said, all right, well, let's go with the fucking playoff guys and Jacob Stallings. And then, by the way, is gone before his opening day. You think? First full season, it didn't hit that well. I don't know, we'll see. But uh, and then I I feel like it was pretty appropriate for the most part. I mean, Guriel was not really good. I don't I really, think here's he only here's made like one, two errors though. So. Here's Go my on. one real gripe with the Gold Gloves. Yep, Arenado won it based on his name. Ryan McMahon. Ryan McMahon. Uh, who was the other finalist? He deserved it too. Manny Machado. They both they both had more had higher out. Had more outs above average, I believe. Uh, more defensive runs saved. I mean, Arenado literally won it based on, yeah, based on the merit. That's that's really, that was, that's it. Uh, yeah. So, any other, uh, any other comments no, on, the, just, on the Gold Gloves? I just, just think Ryan McMahon should have won. He had a fantastic year defensively. I Lindor should have won I it. I think Landor should have won it. Yeah. All right. So yeah, we can we we'll can't start, nice things. That's all it is. We'll, we'll start off with manager of the year. So in the National League, we got Craig Council of the Brewers, Gabe Kapler of the Giants, Mike Schilt of the Cardinals. In the AL, we got Dusty Baker well, of the at- okay. What? Okay, I was gonna say let's go, let's go real quick. Okay, we can do that. Who do you, who you voting for? I know who it's gonna be. Who's it gonna I'm be? I'm gonna it's gonna be Gabe Kapler. Okay. And who you voting? I'm gonna give my vote to Mike Schilt. Okay. Why? I really want to see him <laughs> was sec- second year in a row because it happened last year to the White Sox, right? Uh, is that last year? Where, was where Renteria went? Renteria? But did he win it last year? Maybe I don't know. But he, either way, yeah, I can't remember. But yeah, I, I want to see the manager get fired and win manager of the year. <laughs> Just for this fight. That's that's me. So funny. Uh yeah. I mean, we we know that they uh, that the writers are literally fucking sucking off Gabe Kapler as we speak as they did all fucking year it was weird because they were saying you know when he was with the Phillies how bad of a manager he was so my it, it, my it intu- really is very interesting my intuition on this situation is that he's not a good manager I think Farhan Zaidi is just a good general manager and makes Ooh, the right moves did. and he won executive of the year oh wow look at that I mean, come on, Gabe <laughs> Kapler is not a good manager. And if you actually think so, I think you're blind. Because, dude, why the Phillies were a talented team? Why didn't he do this with the Phillies? Right. Yep. He didn't have a bullpen. Uh, but arguably, the Phillies had a more talented offense and pitching staff than the Giants. Yes. On paper. I mean, Kevin Gossman is your ace. The dude fucking was a reliever for the fucking past six yeah. years. Like, come on. Uh uh, my votes for Craig Council. Okay. Regardless, the Can't dude, the dude is the best manager in the NL, in my opinion. I mean, 100%. he just, dude, he just does these fucking wild things. 
He's a genius. He Baseball makes all genius. the right moves. Yep. All the right moves. With a legendary batting stance. Hell yeah. Uh, in the AL, what do we got? In the AL, we got Dusty Baker of the Astros, Kevin Cash of the Rays, and Scott Service of the Mariners. Who's yeah, your vote? Who I'm voting, right? Uh, no. Give me Scott Service. I mean, what he did I had with a this, with this you were going with Mariners him. club. Yeah. I mean, listen. This team was in contention up until the very end. Yeah. And this it was a very, very young team. And, and the season got off to a really rough start with the, the between the top for the executive getting canned for saying some dumb shit. <laughs> yeah. That which was fucking wild still to me. Yep. Um, you know, having so many different guys in and out, not really having Kyle Lewis for most of the year, who was the air rookie of the year last year. Yeah. Did a great Pretty job piecing year. this team, piecing that lineup together night in and night out. Mm-hmm. really getting the most out of his guys and on it, keeping them in the playoff race and, and really giving himself even more job security. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I think in the AL, none of them are really a wrong pick. Right. Um, I, I think it's going to be Kevin Cash, but I'm also going to give my vote to Scott Service. Uh, and originally it was Kevin Cash, uh, but I'm, gonna, I'm switching my vote personally uh, because I saw earlier that Scott Service – or yet last night, sorry. Uh, the Mariners had the most one-run wins. They had also the most come-from-behind wins. And they were a team that nobody expected to be there. And they did it. So he also uh, – I, I saw some, like, in-depth shit. Or something with, like, the relievers that he put in won this certain games, and it was, like, 10 more than the next guy. So – and that's also, don't forget, after trading their fucking all-star closer. <laughs> yeah. To a division rival. With, with a sub-1 ERA. While you play them. <laughs> yeah, during the series, yeah. Fucking so, well. All right, what else we got? All right, rookie of the year. In the NL, we have Dylan Carlson of the Cardinals. Jonathan India of the Rays. His father grew up in Oceanside. And Trevor Rogers. Of the, of oh, wait, the, wait, wait, wait. Uh, Jonathan India of the what? You said the Rays. Of the Reds. Wow, that's... And Trevor Rogers of the Marlins. I like the idea to give it to Rogers. He had a fantastic year, and you know, we, we, you and I both said, "Who the fuck is this guy? What a fluke!" When he tossed a fucking gem against the Mets early in the year. I'm going to go with Jonathan India, though. Uh, you know, his father grew up in Oceanside, by the way. Um, still need to confirm this, by the way. We have to get on that in terms of confirmation with that. Um, but I, I, he led the Reds, really kept him in it all year long. He was, was yeah. a huge part of that offense. Yeah, I uh, have his numbers right here. I mean, he was off the charts. 113 OPS plus, 122 weighted, weighted runs created plus, 3.9 more, leads to three in war. So I, I'm giving my vote to India. Um, I think it will be India too. Um, Rogers had he pitched the entire season, there's a good shot that it would be yeah, him. a couple of times. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I think that was his really uh his Achilles uh, his Achilles heel. But uh right. he's got a he's got a great future and he'll be fine. In the AL, we got Randy Arosa Reina and Wander Franco of the Tampa Bay Rays, both of them, and Luis Garcia of the Astros. Who are you picking? I don't think there's any real clear cut winner here. No, like I, th- I think in some of the other ones, it's very much a clear cut. Franco came up late. A Rosarena did have a great year. I think a Rosarena was still riding a lot of that postseason notoriety going into the year and and <clears throat> you know throughout the year. Okay, as a player to watch, so he could have gotten away with a, a subpar year. Even I'm gonna give my vote to Wander Franco because. Okay. That on base streak he had, what was it, 40 games, something like that? That's right. absurd. Yeah, I don't remember what it was exactly. Like, it, it was absurd. Yeah. Yeah. Um, something like that, I would say he is, I mean, that alone at, at that age, now granted, he's a top prospect. He, we are expecting him to do stuff, some wild stuff like that. Yeah. But what are the 45, 47 game on base streak? It's, a, it's insane. Yeah. yeah. In that division, too, no less. Yeah. I mean, 
can't go wrong. I mean, I agree. I am going to go with Randy Rosarena, though. I mean, he just his numbers are the best out of the three. So it's just uh, can't go against it. And he, he's a good defender too. So and he stole home yes. in the World Series. I mean, in the sorry, in the Division Series. Cy Young in the National League. We have Corbin Burns of the Brewers, Max Scherzer of the Dodgers and Nationals, and Zach Wheeler of the Philadelphia Phillies. Who's your pick? The second half was fucking incredible, man. I'm going to have to give my vote to Corbin Burns. Guy did it throughout the year. I did not night out. Yeah, he got, he got a little bit later in the year, but again, early return starter, you're going to have that burnout towards the end of the year. It happens. He was able to push through it. Fantastic in the playoffs too. Not that this yeah. goes into the, go not that that goes into yeah. the no, not that that goes into the award at all. But right, I'm just saying. Uh, I mean, but, but my vote's gonna go Corbin Burns, but you really can't count out what Scherzer did when he got traded. Sorry, you know the deadline day yeah. to the very end of the year. You mm-hmm. can't discount that in the slightest bit. And yeah, you know, that's gonna be the top two. Zach yeah. Wheeler though. What a fucking campaign he had. Yeah, deservingly in the top three. You know, and this is the guy that the Mets fans really were hoping to see and you know, took a little anger and spite and across, uh, rival to really show it. Fine. No good for him. Nah, I still wanted them to sign him back. Fuck, fuck know, Brody. Uh, I'm going with Cor- Corbin Burns. I mean, I think it's just plain and simple. I think that he's just the very clearly was the best pitcher in the MLB this year. Yeah, outside the ground it's half season. Yeah, that's, that doesn't count. Uh, in the American League, we have Garrett Cole of the New York Yankees, Robbie Ray of the Toronto Blue Jays, and Lance Lynn of the White Sox. I'm going to go Robbie Ray. Robbie it's Ray. It's a bullet, it's just easy. Yeah. yeah. I mean, if you, if you like if you like sabermetrics, though, if you like the in-depth stuff a lot. It's Garrett Cole, right? Then it is Cole. Cole's, yeah. Yeah. Cole I had mean, a great year. Don't get me wrong. You, you want to. Look, look at FIP, or ERA and FIP, for example. Cole had a 3.23, 3, uh, 3. sorry. And Robbie Ray had a 2.48. So a solid, what was that, 75 points or so. And then FIP, Cole had a 2.92. And Robbie Ray had a 3.69. So, I mean, and their WHIP, 105 oh, nice. and 104. Thank you. And yeah, uh, I know Sierra in uh, Sierra Cole leads him too. So yeah. right, all the all these in depth standard metrics that you can't really explain without a calculator. Um, there, it, it really depends on what you value as a, a voter. Um, yeah. And again, we've given these guys, we've given fans ample opportunities to vote on who you guys think should win these awards so go check out our social medias uh definitely get on that we might nope, even no more votes. down to keep the three no more votes no no because no because people are stupid and they couldn't read people are people are stupid and no not, not only that just the people will add in like oh scherzer was good in the playoffs so like picking him like no it's not how it works dumbass so, so, so. so going forward we'll uh we'll only give top three when the finals get announced uh yeah, no, no, we have to do it right at the end of the season. No, we'll talk about it. Uh, in for the most valuable player award in the National League, we have Bryce Harper of the Phillies, Juan Soto of the Nationals, and Fernando Tatis Jr. of the Padres. Who's your choice? I want to say Bryce because he he really did have a great year, but I'm gonna go with Juan Soto, young Godo. Yep, uh, just just too good of a year to ignore yeah i mean bryce was definitely the best hitter yes in uh, stats wise in uh the national league uh for the full season and i think that uh his overwhelmingly good second half really uh really pushed him to the spot overwhelmingly good looks that too um because i mean it, it seems as if every year we're like oh tatis has got this Fucking like, and then know, he gets hurt and and, he, and and do some some wild shit. Yeah. So, well, we'll see. Maybe maybe Tatis next year. 
But uh, I'm giving my giving my vote to Soto. I mean, he is just barely under Harper in every statistical category besides like home runs and, and on base percentage, right? Well, he he led, he led the. I think he led the entire MLB in on base. What was his on base percentage, by the way? <sighs> Hold on. It's Juan Soto, right? At 22 years old, 23, 23 that on the end of nowhere. Uh, 465, and Bryce Harper's was 429. At 22 years old, he got on base 46. Let's round up 47% of the time. Yeah. I don't care who you are. <laughs> it's insane. What team you play for, that's absurd. Yeah. It's insane. That's some video game bullshit. Yeah. And, uh, I mean, Bryce, Bryce took him in slugging, obviously. Uh, Bryce is more of a power hitter, which is obviously in turn he – he had six more home runs, and he uh, also in a, in a small ballpark too. That too, good call. Uh, so he 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 upped him in OPS plus and weighted runs created plus. Can you imagine but, Soto and Citizens Bank with the fucking the wind tunnels, the fucking short short no. the, the, the small field, the the alleys, no. the high wall. Oh. But uh, I think I think a, I think a good. Uh, a good judge is his expected their expected slugging compared to their real slugging. Bryce Harper's real slugging was 615. His expected was 598. So it's a 17-point drop. And Soto's was 534. And then his expected is 533. So it's only 1% drop. So or a one point drop, sorry. And uh I, I think that that's a I think that's a big key. I think that shows that Bryce Harper was playing in a much better park. Um, and also going by war, he sort of was the best. Uh, F war, he's at 6.5 to 6.6. Actually, in F war, Trey Turner has it led the league at 6.8. And then in B war, Soto had uh, a 7 war and Bryce Harper had a 5.9. So, that's What's my there, choice. Between F war and B war, is it fan graphs and baseball reference? Correct. Okay. All right. And then in the AL, Shohei Otani, Vladimir Guerrero Jr., and Marcus Semien. Who's your choice? Give me Vladito. Vladito Jr. I mean, the dude's just a beast. I understand Shohei did it both ways. Shohei did get lit up a little bit. At the end, I understand the hype about Shohei. I get it. I totally understand. But I'll take Vladdy Jr. All right. Um, I'm cheating. Okay. You're gonna give the judge. No, I want a first. I want a first place. For both Otani and Vlad. Tie. I want to tie. They both deserve it. I mean, they both deserve it in different ways. Vladdy was the best hitter in the MLB this year. But Otani was, yeah, far and away. And he was the most productive hitter, too. I mean, just, you know. And then Otani was the best Otani is the game player. MVP. Yeah, which is why I brought watchability to the sport. He brought entertainment. He brought something that we haven't seen since Babe Ruth. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, exactly. So, um, (laughs) it's, I I get it. I get it. I know uh, Um, a lot of people are saying, you know, that there should be more like the, uh, the NFL awards, you know. The uh, defensive, defensive, no, 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 like the outstanding player and then the MVP or whatever it's called. What's it called? It's so stupid. It's so stupid. What's improved and whatever. No, no, no. What the fuck is it called? This either way. Um, one thing I want to note about all six oh, MVP finals, off, offensive player of the year, or like, yeah, like that kind of thing. Yeah. No, and MVP, like separate them. Yes. Um, one note about all six MVP finalists. None of them 
were on a playoff team. None of the six were on a playoff team. So this notion that you have to be on a playoff team to 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 win MVP, this and that, kind of getting a little traction towards fuck fuck that. You know, yep. and I've always hated that idea that you've had to be on a playoff team. To, to you don't have to. Paid. It's literally not in the rules, but it, it's just right. writers it like it. help you. So it makes you wonder, though, since the Blue Jays were, what, a game away from being in the playoffs, does that help Vladdy since he was in the playoff race? Yes, it does. I think it does. I think he's because he's played more meaningful baseball down the stretch. And I think that's what yeah. it has a lot to do with it, more meaningful baseball. So you play your best in meaningful games. And I think that has a lot to do with it. Um, do I agree with it? No. Yeah, but I still give it to Vladdy either way. Yep. So we're going on what 100 minutes for episode 100 here? Uh, seems like it. Listen, you know, let's think about this. If we had the other, if we had the other two, it's would have gone right. a whole lot longer. <laughs> no, wouldn't happen. Feels good doing a podcast just two of us though for a while. It's been a while since we did this. That's. Yeah, nice change of pace. Been, well, I mean, last time we did a podcast, About a year, longer. Yeah, last time we did one, just two of us was in person on audio only. Crazy, man. so crazy. Yep. Check us out on YouTube at Take a Pitch on the socials at Take a Pitch on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. Uh, like, comment, subscribe, rate, review, download undo all that then do it again if you have to fuck it why not right um don't do that if you want to leave two reviews fuck it do it you could do that um as long as they're good otherwise premeditated murder calling it right now you fucking tell your lawyer i don't care all righty uh check out the other podcasts on the network from the tips great golf content on the power play great hockey content hockey's in full swing your islands are looking a little rough there bud all right. <laughs> uh, Tri State Sports Beat is on a bit of a hiatus, as is the cut. So we will uh, hopefully be on new stuff, new new episodes from both those podcasts soon. Probably not. Wow. <laughs> okay. You know what? All right. Let's see how it is. Anyway, um, episode 100 in the books. Here's to another 100, if not 200. And, uh, been a fun ride so far yeah it's been something say that much it's definitely been something <laughs> all right we'll see you at some point in the near future next, next week. week the week after oh, we gotta figure week. out what day we'll figure out the day next week um all right some point next week we'll see you next week and uh, next week again as billy loves to say if you're not watching and you're only listening stream it a little bit on youtube go watch you know my facial expressions definitely yeah. Or something. Yeah. Uh, if you're watching it on YouTube, feel free to just pop it on the car. Maybe continue where you left off. Obviously, this is the very end. We should probably start doing this at the beginning. Uh, <laughs> um, you know, just give us a run of the plays a little bit. Help us out. Don't forget, soapazon.com. Use promo code TAP, T A P. Get yourself some fucking soap. Stop fucking sm- being so smelly. Uh, soap's great. I love it. I use it all the time. Yes, sir. Mac and Chris, uh, and and Mike. Hopefully, we'll have you guys back for next week. Billy, always a fun time. Peace out. Peace. Love you. Bye.